Hi, this is Rob Leo, and in this tutorial, we're going to continue to look at Google Drive. In the previous tutorial, you'll learn how to log in. You learned about grid view versus list view. You learned how to click the new button to upload or to create some new folders and organize things, upload files, or upload entire folders worth of stuff. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the other menu options and other functionalities of Google Drive as well. Um, so we know that My Drive is the stuff that you own. Shared with me is the stuff that someone else owns but has given you access to. Let me just pull in another browser here. This is a West Hill account. And I've got a, a Google slide presentation here that I like to share with my um, with my West Genesee account. So I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to click share. You'll also notice that as you select it, a single file, it will turn blue. The share button is located here as well. Uh, both will get you to the same place. Right now, this is set to anyone at West Hill Schools with the link can view. Um, I want to change the setting, though. Actually, I don't want to change the setting. I just want to add myself to it. So if I click on the person with a plus icon to share, I can type in an email address, a Gmail address, rather, uh, and rleo at westgenesee.org is a valid Gmail address. Notice I can uh, change what kind of access I have. Um, if I want the person I'm sharing with to edit, I can leave it with the pencil icon to edit. I can uh, have someone else comment on it. You get a speech bubble for commenting, which we'll talk about in another tutorial, or I can just let someone view a document. In other words, they can't make changes to it. They can't uh, comment on it. They can simply look at it. I'm going to give myself editing rights. I can also send myself a note and the message should come to my West Genesee email account indicating that, um, that uh, someone has given me access to a document. When I'm all set, I can simply click send. Now, because I'm sharing outside of the West Hill domain, it's giving me a warning message. I'm okay with that. I'm going to click yes. All right, so that's been sent off. And if I want to see who this document is shared with, by the way, so I was working with some second graders uh, doing a collaborative PowerPoint or a collaborative slideshow about bats. Uh, but if I want to see who this is shared with, I can click on the share setting again. And if I look at advanced, you can kind of see uh, who has access to that particular document. And if at any point you want to get rid of that kind of access, you can click the X and remove that person from your share uh, settings. Let me minimize this and go back to my West Genesee account. Now notice shared with me, again, my drive I own, shared with me someone else owns, and you can see that Rob Leo from West Hill Schools has shared this document. When I open it up, because I gave myself editing rights, you can see that the full suite of editing tools is at my disposal. There's no save button, so I'm simply going to close it. Um, if I want to make this my own and uh, not necessarily have a version of it in my share with me, I really can't organize share with me. It's not my stuff. Um, but what I want to do is make this my own. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm simply going to click uh, make a copy. And when I do so, it's going to retitle it copy of whatever the original title is. And now notice back in my drive, copy of bats. Rob Leo at West Genesee Schools is now the owner. So I've made a copy of it. Uh, let me just right click and rename it. I'm just going to get rid of the copy of and just call it bats. And in parentheses, maybe I'll put uh, a fill. Just a reminder to myself where that came from. And again, you can see the changes uh, reflected instantly on your account. As I mentioned before, you can organize stuff. So if I want to put this in a folder, Let's say I want to put it in that demo folder. I can simply drag it in or on the main screen, I could drag it up to the top of my screen and drop it in that way. Now that file appears in bats. Let's say I want to come back to this file frequently. Let me just open it up. You saw me rename a document from the main screen. I could also just click the title of the document and give it a new name. That saves automatically. Notice next to the title is an icon for a star. If I click the star, it turns gold. Notice back in Google Drive, starred items. Because I put a star on bats, now it appears in my starred items. If I right click on it again, I could remove the star and it will no longer appear in starred items, but it still remains in the My Drive space where I originally uh, kept it. Think of this as just sorting through your stuff. If you have documents you need to refer to frequently and don't want to search your drive, uh, you could star them. Another way to search for your stuff, 
Notice you can search by document type. If you just search your drive, you are not searching all of Google. You're simply searching your drive. So if I want to look for any Google Slides presentations, I can click it and it will show me all the presentations that I have, whether they're Google Slides presentations or PowerPoint presentations. I could do the same thing <clears throat> if I want to search for PDFs, for example. Again, you just uh, search by file type. And if you click the, the menu, you can search by type, you can search by owner, you can search wherever, whether it's even in the trash or start items, you can search by when it's modified. You can even uh, search by keyword that might be in the document. You can search by the title of the document. It really doesn't matter. Google knows where to find stuff. Um, and if I was just to search, for example, um, if I typed in bats. Again, you can see it's in two places. It's in the original uh, from West Hill Schools and it's in the uh, new copy that I made as well. If I click recent, again, I opened up BATS. I opened up the previous version of BATS and BATS and another tutorial. I opened up a video file. It just kind of gives me a timeline of when I open my stuff. And it also tells me uh, who the owner of that stuff is. Let's say I want to get rid of this file. I can simply put it in the trash. If you prefer, you can click it once. You see a trash icon here as well. You could remove it. That places it in the trash. And if you ever need to restore something, you could always go to your trash and uh, restore it. Why does it not appear there? Did I not do it? Oh, it was shared with me. That's why. Um, it just removes myself from the shared list. Um, if I want to uh, trash something that I own, again, I can move it to trash. And when I do so, I could always... Uh, right click on this and restore it and it will go back to my drive. So again, notice that if you remove something that's shared with you, you're simply taking yourself off the share list. It's not your document, but if you make a copy of it, it is your document. And if you put it in the trash, you can always uh, restore it where it once was. So this was restored right back to the demo folder where it was last left off. So hopefully this uh, tutorial is giving you a better understanding of the interface. Again, my drive, the stuff you own, shared with me. Notice I removed myself from the BATS collection. Um, is no longer there, but other stuff that I've shared with myself previously is there. Recent stuff, the stuff you open, starred stuff, the stuff you designate as a favorite, and trash, the stuff um, that you've placed in the trash to uh, remove from your main interface. Again, if you want to get rid of this stuff, you can simply click empty trash. It removes everything. If you want to remove an individual file, you can right click and delete forever. My advice is put it in trash and then ignore it. There's no need for you to empty your trash. You can always retrieve stuff if you make a mistake later on. Thanks for listening. Hope you found this tutorial useful.